Finally, it's there we have measure-driven data labels, which let you set the values of your labels using measures to basically whatever you like to show on your labels, which is super powerful. And yes, that was kind of possible before with some weird workarounds, but now it is much more straightforward. So let's see how we can create an example like this one, and let's go over all of the things that you need to know about this new feature. Let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's dive in straight away and explore this new feature which lets you set the values of your labels using measures. Now, of course, you need to be on the latest version of Power BI, which is at the moment of recording May 23. All right, and then we can follow along. Now, I have over here already a chart set up and I want to add some normal labels to it. So let's select it and let's go to the formatting options. Now, here we have data labels, let's turn them on. And then we open up this data label section. And here we see we have one series, sales actual in my case. And for this series, we can set all of the options, values, and background. Now, let's go to values, scroll down a bit, and ta-da, there is the new feature, custom label. We can turn it on, but nothing happens just yet, because here we have the field that we can now add to the labels. Now, for this, we need a measure. So, let's get back here once we have written the measure. So, we have to write the measure first. So, let's do this. Let's go here to the data pane, and I'm going to add a new measure. Now let's go for something simple. I want to show my actual sales. So square bracket open. I'm going to look for my sales measure. There it is. And I also want to show, let's say the year over year, sales growth. Okay, now I'm going to refer to another measure that I have. And that's it. Now let's see how that looks like on our labels. So back here on the formatting options, we go again to data labels. And now here for the field, click on add data. And here, in my metrics table, there we have our labels measure. Let's select it. And that doesn't look so good. Why not? Because it just shows the full value and all of the decimal places and combines that with that second measure. There's no space in between whatsoever. So let's go back to a measure and fix this. Now the way to fix it is with the format function. Now here we can just wrap both of our measures that we refer to inside of a format function. So we can say format, sales actual, and then comma, and the second argument is going to be a custom formatting string. Well, for the second measure, we can do exactly the same. So let's put this also here inside of a format function. And then here we have quotation mark, quotation mark. Now here we need custom formatting strings between the quotation marks. Now, if you have no clue about custom formatting strings, no worries, it's not that difficult. But if you want to know all of the ins and outs, just check out this video over here. Now, how it works is as follows. We have pound symbols, so hashtags, for optional placeholders, and zeros for mandatory placeholders, all right? So if I have one zero, well, always one digit will show. Right now, if I want to have also a comma for thousand separator, then we can do pound symbol, comma, and then pound symbol, pound symbol, zero. Now, this will always show a thousand separator. And then we can do a decimal separator. And then, for example, if I always want to have one decimal place, well, a zero for the first decimal. All right. Now, if we want to show values in thousands or millions, then we can put in a comma right in front of the decimal placeholder. One comma shows it in thousands, two commas would show it in millions. All right, but let's first see how this will look like. Now, here we have the first measure formatted. Now, the second measure, then we need to do the same, but this one I want to show in percentages. So 0.0, .0 percentage. All right, now let's see how this looks like. Now that looks better, however, still a bit weird because we have no separator between the results of the two measures. So let's fix that quickly. And that is relatively simple. We can just add over here what we want in between, in between quotation marks. All right, and let's say I want to have a pipeline symbol and combine that with the second measure. Okay, and ta-da, that already looks much better. Now, of course, if there's not enough space, it will not show as we have there for the last column and 
uh, the column here for September. So we can play around with the formatting a little bit or make the chart bigger. Now let's do that quickly. I'm going to go here to formatting, data labels, and then over here, I'm going to choose the smallest font size. Maybe that fixes it. Now, if not, then what you can also still do is get rid of the background. Maybe you don't need it. And we can go over here under properties to advanced options and then turn responsiveness off. Now you see for me, it still didn't fix the issue. However, I can now either make the chart a bit bigger or I can make, well, the labels a bit smaller, right? So I can go back to a measure and then labels. And maybe I don't want to have that decimal place there at the end for our sales. So I'm going to get rid of that. And maybe there is still a bit of space for showing K okay, that it's in thousands. Now let's have a look. And then we have our label showing. Perfect. So that means we don't need that Y axis anymore. So let's get rid of it quickly. So I'm going to go back to our formatting options and turn the Y axis off. Now that is already pretty nice. But what would happen if we keep on adding more information to our labels? Now let's try this. I'm going to go to a measure and also put in the forecast value. So over here, I'm just going to copy that first part and then paste it below it. And then here, instead of sales actual, I want to have forecast. So over here, we have the sales forecast. Perfect. Now, let's see how that looks like. Now, that starts to look kind of messy. However, if you really want to show that much information on your labels, then maybe you want to break it down over multiple lines. Now, how can we achieve that? Well, first, I thought, if we go back to a measure, then here we can add a unicar. Done, which is basically a line break. Okay. And if you add this, and uh, maybe I also add it over here, then let's see if it does what we hope it does. And unfortunately, it doesn't. So that's not going to work. So that made me think, how can we then achieve it? Well, what we could do is maybe add sales actuals a second time so that we have two series and then one is going to show the data labels at the top and one is going to show the data labels below it. Now, let's see if that approach works. Now, I'm going to go back to our visualization and then here we can add sales actual a second time, but then here for the line Y axis. Okay, so I'm going to click here on add data and then here I'm going to choose my sales actual. Okay, so two times the same series to remove that line or to hide it. What you can do is just under formatting, set the stroke width to zero. Now for the formatting of the data labels, now you have to watch out because we have sales actual and sales actual two times. Now, thinking over here that sales actual, the second one is the one that we want to change the labels off because now we have two times the same labels. We can go over here and get rid of the custom labeling. So I turn it off. However, hmm, it turns it off for both because it sees it as the same measure. So. Maybe if we create kind of a dummy measure, which returns the same value, that works. Now, let's try that. I'm going to add a new measure. And this measure is going to return exactly the same value as sales actual. So let's call it sales actual dummy, which is going to be equal to well, sales actual. Now here we just have to update the measure that we have on the line Y axis because that one needs to be that dummy measure that we just created. So over here, I'm going to select sales actual dummy. All right. And then we can go to the formatting options. Now the legend we don't need, just turn it off. And then we can go to the data labels. Now at the moment, it's still showing the same values for sales actual and sales actual dummy. Now here, we have to be careful that we select sales actual dummy. All right. And then for the dummy, let's say we want to show, well, the actual values, right? So then we can go a little bit more down. And here we have custom label. Now, custom label, we can turn off or on. Now, for dummy, we need to have it off. All right. And then here for the other one, sales actual, there we want to have it on. Well, uh, it suddenly turned off. So let's turn it on again and then make sure that the label show. Now, it still looks a little bit messy. Why? Because we have the unicorn. 10 characters in there. So let's clean up the labels measure. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the unicorn 10. All right, just like this. And let's say we only want to show sales forecast. 
and the year-over-year -year percentage. And now that looks pretty good. We have the actual value there inside of the column, and then the forecast value and the year-over-year -year percentage right above it. Now, of course, we can play around with the formatting and maybe also swap it huh, so that the main total value is at the top and the forecast value and the year-over-year -year percentage may be inside of the column. Uh, but that is just the same solution the other way around. Now, if you want it the other way around, of course, no problem. Just go back to data labels and then just be a little bit careful which one is selected and make sure that you know which one shows where. So for sales actual, there I can say I want to have the values inside end, all right? And then for the dummy, there I want the position to be above the line. Okay, now you see at the moment only the actual sales shows, so we have to double check here for sales actual dummy. If we go down, well, that one is showing the actual sales. And for the other one, sales actual, and we can go down. Well, there we should be showing the labels. And it still doesn't show. Well, that's maybe because of the color. So let's see if that makes a difference. Also not. And maybe if we add a background, also not. Now remember, if a label doesn't fit inside of the columns, well, it cannot show. So that means we have to make the chart a little bit wider. All right. And then at some point, fit and will show. That's one option. You see, now they're slowly popping up. Or second option is to, well, go over here to the columns. And then here under columns, we can play around with the inner padding. And if we make the inner padding less, it means there's more space and the labels can now show. You see, now all of the labels are showing, but of course, I could also have made the labels a little bit smaller. And maybe it would also be nice to have the total actuals label bold. All right, so let me quickly make these two changes. I'm going to go over here to data labels again. And here I would like to show for the actuals that shows above the columns. I want to show it in bold. All right. And here we can make the chart a little bit smaller. Okay. Now you see they disappear again. However, if I now go back to our measure and I would just get rid of that one digit, then -da, they show again, except for April. So let me make it a bit bigger. Yes, there you go. We also have April there. Now I think this is already pretty amazing. But the next thing that I want to build is a toggle, a toggle that lets the end user choose what they want to have on the labels. For example, actuals versus forecast or the year over year growth percentage. Now I did that in this video over here, but that was still with this weird workaround with dynamic labels. Mm, not so easy. Now, Let's see if we can use this new feature for it. Now, I'm going to insert, first of all, a fields parameter. Because first I thought this is a typical case where we can use fields parameters. And then use that parameter on our new labels, right? Now, let's see how far we get. Now, I'm going to go here to modeling, and then new parameter, and then fields. Now here you can give it a nice name and choose the metrics that you want to toggle between. Now, you see here I have different measures. And let's say we want to have, first of all, the absolute values, right? Sales actual. We also want to be able to see the maximum min. And we want to be able to see the sales year over year growth percentage. OK, now let's say that's it. Now here I just leave the name as it is, parameter. That's fine for now. And I'm going to add a slice on the report page. For that slicer, let's get rid of the header. All right, so here are the formatting options. Slicer header, I'm going to turn off. And then here for values. There, let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's go for, let's say, font size 10. All right. Then resize it. I'm going to put it just below the title for now. And then for the main chart, well, we don't need that line series anymore. So let's get rid of that one. Okay. And then we can go to the formatting options where we update the labels, right? So let's go over here to data labels. And over here on the values, there we have custom label. And we want to have this for sales actual. OK, and instead of having here labels, I want to choose that fields parameter so that it shows the selected field. OK, now add data, parameter, and there we have the field parameter. Click on it, nothing happens. Because over here, this is just one column in that fields parameter table, and you cannot select it. All right, so we still are looking at the sales actuals. That's, of course, not great. So how are we going to fix this now? Well, we need 
a measure there on fields, right? So also here we need to write that measure then, right? So let's add a new measure. And then here we can call this one label switch. And here I want to switch. So let's use the switch function. And I want to check the value that the user selected in the slicer, which we can do with a selected value function, which only returns value when one value is selected. OK, so we can look in the parameter table where we have a column with the, well, structured references to these fields. OK, and maybe in case somebody does a multi-select, then we can go for sales actuals, all right? So that is going to be the default. Now, then we can check the selected value. And if it's equal to, and over here, we can return the measure name of the very first one, which is going to be, let's say, actual sales. And if it is, then we want to, well, return the actual sales, just like this. And then we continue with the other ones. And so we have still the max min. So also there have a measure. And if it is selected, then we want to have max min. And I continue with the last one. So over here we have the year over year growth percentage. And then we turn that measure growth percentage, sales year over year. Okay. Now let's close the switch function. And then we can take our visual again, go to the formatting options. And then we are going to have a look here under data labels. Now here we can click on add data and we can now go for a new measure. Now we call that label switch. So label switch, there it is. Okay, now let's see if it works at the moment. Sales actual is selected. And if I click here on max min, well, nothing. And then sales year over year, huh. Something changed, but still doesn't look great. Now let's fix this issue. So let's go back to our label switch measure. And here, well, what is missing? The format function, just like before. Now starting with the last one, because that one is the more straightforward one. So format, sales year over year percentage. I want to have it in percentages. So over here, 0, 0, 0, 0.0 percent. Okay, now I also need a quotation mark there at the end. Perfect. OK, now let's see how it looks like now. Now that is already better, right? So I can already toggle between sales actual and sales year over year percentage. OK, perfect. And why is max min not working? Well, over there, you see, I created a measure max min. And without going over all of the details, well, what it does is basically it summarizes the sales actual by year, quarter, month, right? And then looks for the maximum. And the same for the minimum. And then if the sales is equal, to the maximum or sales is equal to the minimum, then return well the actual sales. Now, and what is missing is, well, what if it's not, right? So over here, I want to have, when it's not equal to the maximum min, I want to have quotation mark, space, quotation mark. Now, what is important is that there's a space in between, so not just like this, and also zero, that would also not work. So we need to have quotation mark, space, quotation mark, okay. Now you see, that works. We have only the maximum and the minimum showing, but for the other ones, well, you still see the background because there's a space, right? So if you don't want that, well, then you're probably best off to turn the background off, right? So here in the formatting, then go to data labels, and then here under values, oh, sorry, in the background, there you can turn it off, all right? And that's it. So now we have a nice little toggle that lets us switch between sales actual, max min and sales year over year percentage. And of course, using the measure, we can return whatever we like. Now that's it. This is how you can work with measure driven data labels. Now, if you have any questions or suggestions, put them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, check out these videos over here. And I see you in the next video.